Hey y'all, hi. So, I'm about to move. My husband and I are moving. We're gonna be setting up shop in a new house. It is absolutely wild that this is happening right now. This is not the point of this video, but I just need to say it. There is so much going on. Like everything in my life has changed on a massive scale within a six month period. I have never experienced anything like this. I feel on some days like my mood board for the house is the only thing like tethering me to reality. So I'm excited to make this video because I love to talk about aesthetics. This is what I do here on my channel. If you happen to be new, let me tell you. I am a lover of beautiful things and that extends past beauty, which is how I started here on YouTube, to fashion, interiors, everything to do with the way that aesthetics affect our lives. But I try to approach that from kind of a grounded place. And I feel like when it comes to interiors, that groundedness has to be about the fact that you're actually gonna be living there and that it can't just look like a Pinterest board all the time. Although of course I got all these images from Pinterest. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna be moving, we're gonna be painting. It is an opportunity for the first time in my life to really design space with a color palette in mind. And that's what this video is about. I'm gonna show you my inspiration, my mood boards, my thinking. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I read somewhere that when you are going to paint many rooms in a house, you should start with the hallway and paint the hallway kind of a, a segue color or a go-between color, like a color, the color, the core color that sort of ties all of the other colors together. Because the theory is that you can see the hallway from every room of the house, most rooms of the house, usually, or the hallway is like visually what you encounter as you move from one room to the next. and so that room should kind of be the heart of the house in terms of color. I read this somewhere. I do kind of buy it. And in this house, it's not the hallway. It's interesting. It's this weird sort of spread out. It's not that spread out, but what I'm trying to say is that the dining room, this little pass-through dining room is sort of a hallway that you go through to get from the kitchen area to the living room area and that you can see from pretty much everywhere else in the house. So that's my starting place for this. I feel as though the dining room, it is physically sort of the heart of the house. I think of that as like the heart of the home. You know, you gather with friends, you gather with family, you sit several times a day, you eat together. We always try to eat together. I was already sort of thinking of the dining room as like the center and the heart of the house for that reason. And then putting it together with this thing about painting the hallway in a centering color, like the core color of your life and your stuff, just reinforced my desire and instinct to do that in the dining room. I feel like it's already already going to be an unpopular decision right out of the gate. This is just my mood board, okay? This is just brainstorming. It's sort of just maybe the first iteration of my mood board. We'll see what actually happens. But I have felt called, I have been feeling called to color drench the dining room in a shade of red. Look at these images. So not necessarily crazy red, but something like one of these beautiful, soft, ruddy terracottas, like a matte, warm terracotta full of carrots. Character. Not fire engine red, okay? Not like a McDonald's, but something like this. It could even be called a dark salmon. This is not only really in my personal palette, but it also is the palette of all of our dishes. Our dishes are kind of this color. I have some stronger red bowls and vases. Our dining room chairs are sort of an amber color. I have a couple of pieces of amber glassware. Everything is sort of on this spectrum of like smoky amber through to strong red, but most of the stuff that's in our current dining room actually right now, most of the stuff is in the middle in this kind of like rust, rusty salmon. <laughs> Not a rusty salmon, but you know, in the realm of these kinds of colors. So Joe and I have been toying with the idea of painting the dining room, not only painting, but color drenching it, which if you're unfamiliar with the term, let me explain, means painting the trim as well as the walls and also the ceiling. <laughs> Don't come for me, okay? I feel really excited about these plans. And now that I'm saying it out loud to the internet, I I realize how much I'm exposing myself. This is color drenching and this image with the fireplace, can you see the molding and the ceiling are, are also painted? That's color drenching. So we've been toying with this idea of color drenching the dining room in this really dramatic way at the heart, both emotionally and visually the heart of the house. And then I came across this image. 
Can you even? This is also color drenching. They've also painted the ceiling, but this is a much stronger choice. I mean, this sort of glowing, watery red. This it, this is like the Merit Aperitif or Vermilion of red wall paint. This is super intense. So it's on my mood board too, and I will show you the beginnings of the mood board featuring these three images because this was the beginning of the thinking, right? This was sort of the starting place. Before I built in any other inspirations, before I sort of let my mind wander, this was like the first thing that came to me. So it's the first thing on the vision board, the heart of the ideas, the center of the space physically, and also kind of the genesis of this brainstorming session. But after throwing up a couple of pictures of red dining rooms or red rooms to, you know, inspire my dining room, I kind of pulled myself back to earth a little bit from the intense, Pinterest-worthy, totally clutter-free, designed within an inch of its life type Type of imagery. I felt I needed to remember that imperfection is the reality of lived in space. Everything is always aging. Materials are always aging. Things are always moving in the direction of scuffed and dingy and not absolutely fresh and new. And for me, it's really important with my wardrobe, with my homewares, and also with my approach to just the life that I have, everything about it in terms of trying to stay in the moment and feel how lucky I am. You know, the journey I've been on since the end of my no by year 2018. It's really important to cherish things that are old and not only to think something's nice if it's new, if it's brand new or looks freshly painted. Or another aspect of that is actually if it's different, new and different. But to love what's been there for a very long time, to love what's old, to love imperfections. And also kind of dirt goes with that, right? Dirtiness, a little bit of grunge, a little bit of old world moss between the cracks. So I have these two images that are helping me to connect with that, but it's not just like a grounding and mitigating thing. It's an inspiration as well, because I think both of these are very, very beautiful images. This open, just open fireplace set into a plaster wall that's clearly old and then the wood stacked up. I mean, this is very beautiful and well-designed and well-organized, but it just doesn't look like a showroom. You know what I mean? It looks a bit lived in and used and you can imagine like the sootiness and the smokiness and you can imagine that there's a little bit of soot on the floor and that up close the white paint of the wall is a bit smudged with soot. It's also natural materials. It's earthy. But the other image even more than that helps me stay grounded in this principle because these are like old weather beaten wicker chairs a bit mismatched. The wall has like the signs of ivy growth on it. The flags stones look really old. There's some whitewash on the flagstones. This is just a very lived in space, like not a recently painted, recently finished space, but lived in, worn, worn in, totally imperfect. It looks so great to me, this little outdoor space. It is exactly the feel, the casual feel. There is a kind of luxuriousness in that, in having something aged to this point, because these are also lovely things, right? The chairs are lovely to begin with. The stones are lovely to begin with. The materials themselves are lovely. And the fact that they age to loveliness in this way is what makes them great. I just want to hold on to that as I'm thinking about maybe furniture purchases that we might make, colors that we might choose, and also so that I don't get too out of control and overboard with stars in my eyes making everything spectacular. You know what I mean? A light touch, right? There's something about both of these images that's just a little bit lightly touched, something effortless right? There's something about not trying too hard here that's balanced out by the use of lovely natural materials. So I put these pictures on the mood board. Already, I feel you can see how they balance those extremely beautiful photographs of red rooms. I feel like it makes the red paint idea seem more real, actually, more accessible, but it also makes me understand more what it would be like in real life, I guess. Having these pictures next to those other red dining room pictures. It makes me less inclined to have a fantasy about what the red paint might end up looking like that's not aligned with reality. It helps me align my vision with reality, I guess. So I'm really glad that I put those images on. And then with the pendulum swung back to another incredibly dramatic paint idea. Joe and I have this ochre bedding from Parachute Home that we got a long time ago. It's like a discontinued color. It was limited edition. We love it so much. We have another set of bedding that's like a rich, 
raisin color that we switch out. So it's either ochre or raisin. Raisin is really beautiful as well, but I think ochre, the ochre bedding, it just means a lot to us. It's very us. It's our best bedding, and the curtains in our bedroom are like kind of a golden mustardy color as well, and the rug is as well. Like everything sort of has sprung from this initial inspiration of this rich ochre linen bedding. And we've always sort of half-jokingly talked about how if we really wanted to do it right, we would paint the entire bedroom that same color. So, like, you know what? I'm really to monochromatic stuff lately, okay? This is sort of that. We are both willing to risk it like a biscuit with a rich yellow bedroom, maybe also color drenched. I really like the idea of a bedroom being this moody, almost cave-like space that is restful. And actually color drenching, so painting the ceiling and the trim so it all sort of recedes and simplifies the planes of the space. It is one of the ways to make a space feel more restful on the eyes. That's one of the benefits of it. It seems like it would really work well for a bedroom. I mean, I think what you trade away when you go for a moody space is that airy brightness, that light airy brightness that everybody loves in bedrooms and homes in general. But yellow also has a cheeriness to it when the sun shines in. So I feel like an ochre color or a yellow can be moody at the right time, but also bright at the right time. We're considering it. Let me just say we're considering it. So I found these two pictures. Neither one of them is quite, uh, the one with all the paintings is a little bit brighter yellow than I think that we would want. And the one with the white lamp and the radiator, it's a little bit greener of a yellow than I think we want. But this was the best I could do in terms of inspo images where the space doesn't look too polished. Because again, I, I'm trying to, I realized that I wanted to kind of stick to that. Imperfection lived in a mix of old and new materials. Like there's this old wooden side table next to this, I think, vintage bed in the image on the left, imperfectly aligned gallery wall, and sort of a mishmash of mixed prints in the couch cushions in the image on the right. This artistic, dramatic, moody, lived-in space is helping me hold to reality instead of getting carried away with a Pinterest fantasy. So I picked these two images partly because they have that quality, but also because of the yellow walls and I added them to the mood board. I am very leery of ketchup and mustard as a color scheme anywhere. I actually think that having these rusty reds on the mood board and these sort of golden strange ochre yellows has put my fears to rest a little bit. What I will say is that the dining room and the bedroom are far enough away from each other that they're not going to feel as cheek by jowl as they look here in this just half completed mood board. But I also, this whole time I was thinking about red dining room, yellow bedroom, I was like, it's going to be McDonald's, it's going to be ketchup and mustard. But seeing the actual pictures makes me think, no, it's more like rust and camel. I mean, basically my closet. Do you remember that video that I made about using color to put together beautiful outfits? And then I showed like the color scheme of my wardrobe. <laughs> basically. What I'm trying to say is that I was worried about ketchup and mustard this whole time. And then when I saw the pictures next to each other in the mood board, I was like, oh, actually, I think it will work. It's not giving ketchup and mustard. It's the difference between conceiving of something and seeing it with your eyes. But also, that's a lot of color, okay? That's a lot of color, and from there we pulled back. I love color. I'm proud of myself for wanting to put color in the house because I've moved so in the direction of appreciating the restfulness of a monochromatic space, monochromatic neutrals, not just monochromatic, but monochromatic neutrals. So these days I'd, I'd never buy a piece of clothing unless it's like beige or white. And I rarely wear an outfit that's not like head to toe beige. It's how I feel my best these days. <laughs> it's shocking. So it is good. I think it's good that I'm not wanting to cloak the house as well in head to toe tones of beige or just, you know, dead salmon, which is the color of this paint that's on the wall behind me, which I love. But I'm excited that I'm like feeling a little bit risky, feeling a little bit like doing some dramatic moody rooms. But it can't be the whole house. I don't want it to be a thing where it's like every room is a different color. And I also know that it's logistically complicated and potentially more expensive to like paint a whole bunch of different colors all over the place. And I want there to be some continuity. So after the inspiration of the red dining room, the ochre bedroom, it's kind of like, okay, but and then what's the rest, the entire rest of the house going to be? There needs to just be pretty much one other color that ties everything else together with these two dramatic pops. So that color, that 
continuity color. It's going to be a shade of white, I think. I think a shade of white. But it has to be a white that works with the red. It has to be a white with red undertones, I think. It has to work with the warm, rusty dining room that you'll be able to see from all of these other rooms that are painted in our white, the white that we choose. I absolutely love this shade of white that you can see on this door and wall here on the left. I actually know what color it is. It is a Faro and Ball color called Joa's White. It's a really off white, almost a beige, almost like a very pale version of some kind of warm taupe or something, especially when compared to other very bright whites. I put it next to this room that just showcases the airiness and creaminess of white, but still staying a bit moody, you know? I wanted on the mood board a sense of how white can still have like a lot of texture and character and not just be that sort of cookie cutter, washed out, flat, organic, modern kind kind of slightly dated Pinterest minimalism. And this image is, is really helping me feel like how white can be tactile and be willing to maybe go with something brighter than Joa's white, which is like barely even a white. Cause that was my first impulse. I was like something like this, like something like this one on the left. But if we decide that it would make the space feel a little bit too dark and too closed in, too moody throughout, I needed another image of white paint that made me feel excited. You know what I mean? That, that gave me a tingle. And so this image on the right does that. So I put those onto the mood board and I already feel like the red and the yellow are tempered. It's almost as though these shades of white sort of bridge the grungy, the pictures of things just getting a little old or the exposed wood next to the fireplace, the prospect of soot. They bridge that with the strong painted colorful walls. Okay, these next two images are of bathrooms and I don't know, they're really beautiful, but this is like a kind of luxe home design that is completely out of reach for us. Like we're not gonna be able to have a micro cement shower like this. We're not gonna be able to have this like stunning wooden bathtub. I mean, this like custom, like this is all like really stunning custom design stuff. And it's just like, that's not how it's gonna be. The main takeaway from these images is the brass fixture for the shower head because for fixture, like I think that's the color. And then the rest, the warm wood, it's like adding in the color of wood, which we do have some wooden furniture and brass. I think for things like light fixtures and actually even like this beautiful metal lamp that I have that is brass. These are colors that I would like to see or that are, or that I think are going to be in the home in evidence pretty strongly. And I just wanted to get those colors up in the mood board. And also it's sort of, it's aspirational, you know, it's inspirational, but these are a little bit less practical than the other images that I've shown so far, materially. This is a little bit less materially practical, but color-wise, I think that they are appropriate additions. And you can see now with all of those different shades of neutrals from white all the way to, I guess, bronze, taupe. Once again, I feel that the strong color choices are becoming more reasonable, like more palatable. We are going to have to acquire eventually, probably not soon, a piece of furniture or two. And I'm really interested in curved furniture. The house has some curved archways in like the open doorways between a couple of rooms. There are like curves in the architecture of the house. I've been over here Googling like curved couch curved coffee table because I think that when the time comes, something like these curved pieces of furniture are going to be the best choices. And also for just the flow of the space, a lot of the rooms are rooms that you have to walk through to get to other rooms. So having a lot of like hard planes and edges that block you that you have to walk around, I think that that won't feel as good as having just like curved things that you can flow around. In any case, I put these curved pieces of furniture on the mood board because I was just throwing on things that I think are beautiful and trying to get a full sense of tactily what I think it might be like to be in this space if we succeed at like doing a good job at painting it and furnishing it and all of this. I don't think we can have a white boucle couch like this. I think that Sadie would tear it up immediately, but it's more about the shape and, and even the colors and like the backgrounds of these pictures 
windows and the shade of the wood and the coffee table, etc. So here's how the mood board is looking. A lot of taupey neutrals, I guess, bronzy neutrals, shades of gold kind of because natural wood, the natural wood that you can see on the mood board is kind of on the gold spectrum somewhere and so is taupe in its way, especially like a light, warm, creamy, beigey taupe. I feel like it's looking good. And this was where I initially had stopped. I was like, this is it. This is my life. This is what our house is going to look like. It's sort of shades of taupe and gold and creamy white and then a rust colored room and a dramatic yellow room that's going to be behind a closed door most of the time. This feels very safe to me with kind of like the one risk of the red dining room. Very doable with what we already have. Like the things that we already own would fit into this space and would enhance this space. Like the rugs that I have, like a brownish gold rug, a goldish gold rug, a rug with some red in it. Like it all, this all makes very much sense to me. And I was just going along like la 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 la, everything is going to work out. Everything's cohesive, everything's streamlined, kind of color minimalism, but writ large in the home. Nothing is outside of this pretty edited color scheme of shades of gold to cream and rust. And that is it period, we're done, mic drop, door closed. That was how I was going along for quite a while. Then we were in Ikea on my birthday. <laughs> Don't ask why. I mean, it wasn't like I wanted to go to Ikea on my birthday. We ended up in Ikea on my birthday for reasons that have to do with nap schedules and being in the car and also to look at some furniture because we know we were gonna be moving. Just, it was my 39th birthday and we were in Ikea, okay? We were going along, wheeling the stroller. It was a Tuesday or something, so it was totally abandoned. We were having a great time. I mean, just being with Joe on my birthday, wandering through Ikea and hearing all of the goofy things that he has to say. Actually, what could be better? And then I saw this piece of furniture. I will show it to you now. It doesn't look as good as in this picture as it looks in real life because it's metal. It's like a very tactile, powder-coated metal. It looks like flat and plastic in this picture, but it is a stunning piece of furniture. Really cool, interesting, doesn't look Ikea, and also very practical for our purposes. Something that we really need, which is like a multifaceted, multi-chambered landing station for when you come in from outside, where you can charge electronic equipment, put mail, put down your key, where everything can collect, but that has enough space for everyone in the household to put down their things, and that has drawers that close that puts all of that stuff away out of sight, like that isn't open shelving, basically. I saw it and I was just like, wow, that's such a special, cool piece of furniture, and it would work so well for our purposes. And Joe was like, it's your birthday, and he bought it for me. And I was like, oh my god, I would... I, I've i really been working on just not resisting, letting go. Like when things are happening, just not clamping down and trying to force everything to be perfect and be aligned with my vision. But if just a thing is happening, just let it happen. And we saw this beautiful piece of furniture and I was like, wow, that's so cool. It's so beautiful. It would work for our purposes. I kind of want it. I was sort of joking. And then Joe was like, I'm going to buy it for you for your birthday. Instead of being like, no, it's green. And my mood board doesn't have a speck of green green on it. it ha if only if it was taupe, I would say, okay, but since it's green, no. Instead of doing that, I was just like, let, let's just let go. Like, okay. I was like, I love you. Okay. Wow. I feel so special. And I did. And then I panicked. Like the next day I woke up and it wasn't my birthday anymore. And we had this flat packed green, big green thing in our house. And I was, I mean, we haven't moved yet. So it's just in its box. But I woke up the next morning and I was like, Hannah, you have destroyed your beautifully balanced color minimalist mood board by allowing Joe to purchase for you a piece of green furniture. And then I was like, deep breath. And here's what I did. I went to the mood board and I added, well, first I was like, actually, you do have one other green thing and it's the rug. It's my outfit of the day rug. You all have probably seen it on Instagram. Well, those of you who follow me on Instagram, I am frequently featuring this green rug, which used to be the only green thing. And when I got the rug, I was like, it's so beautiful. I just feel it, but it'll just be the one green thing. Even though green's not really my color, it's not really my interior's color. It'll just be the one green thing. And it has worked. Now there are two green things. And so I sat with that for a while and I, and then I put these green things onto my mood board. I was like, let's just see how it looks. Let's just put them there and see how it actually looks and see if I can overcome the irrational panic. So I put them on the mood board and look at them. They look great. And here's the thing. It's different than if we were painting like a wall green, like a room green. A green 
pop one piece of furniture in one room and then one rug maybe in the same room actually but not adding in green as like a whole other accent color that you see everywhere like red and rust and like gold and yellow but just the two green things just popping green is also the color of plants so if there are plants in this space which there will be there will be green i think it works i saw it when i saw it my panic immediately abated and i was like oh my gosh actually it breathes a little air into the color story of the house it makes it feel a little bit less closed down claustrophobic perfect sealed over you know i'm into that I'm into relaxing the grip a little bit. This is the mood board with the images as it ended up. Taking away the images, you can see the little dots of color that were pulled from the images. Here they are a little bit bigger. This makes sense to me. Just having the colors too and having the images taken away, it's a little bit intimidating because they're purer. The colors are more pure and so it's, it's kind of overwhelming. But I feel like the pinkish red here, which is taken from that extraordinary picture of a color drenched dining room, I feel like that's a a little bit unrealistic. I don't think that that color is the color we're going to choose for the dining room. We don't really have anything in that color. We have some really bright cherry red, a few pieces of ceramics that are really bright cherry red. But I took that color out and let the red just be that kind of rusty, almost mauve terracotta. And in this context, the green I feel is much more doable, really quite doable. But with all of these dots being the same size, the green isn't in its place, right? As just a very, very small accent of the one birthday cabinet. Neither are the ochre and the terracotta because there just is going to be much less of a presence of those colors than there is going to be of these neutrals. So here's an image with just the colors, but with the dots sized kind of proportionally. <laughs> like this is how much neutral and taupe and beige I think there's going to be in this space with relation to the terracotta, the ochre, the green, and the bronze. And this helps me realize that what feels like extreme drama the green cabinet, the red dining room, like what feels like really, really dramatic choices, proportionally, it's actually not that dramatic. And it also makes me realize that my idea to have some version of white on most of the walls, I think is a good one. I think that the balancing factor, the proportions, the proportionizing of it all is going to be key. But I do feel like these just blank swatches of color aren't as useful for kind of imagining the feel of a space as the images of actual spaces are. So I went ahead and put, to complete the project, some of the images of the spaces into these dots, into these circular swatches, and ended up with, I think, probably a quite accurate kind of piece of visual emotional communication about the feeling of the space. This is like the final destination of this moody, boardy project, and I really like it. It makes me feel confident to do things like color drench the dining room. It makes me feel excited, more excited about the space than nervous that we're going to make really bad paint choices or furniture choices. There were ups and downs, but this kind of gets me where I need to go. Of course, though, this is just the beginning. These are just thoughts. These are just plans. How shall I document the actual journey? I know YouTubers often do this. I mean, I would have been doing this before. I would have done more interiors content before, but we've always rented. You know, in the house we're in right now, we haven't been able to, we haven't really been supposed to paint at all. I mean, we're going to be repainting this wall when we move out, back to how it was before. This is going to be our house. We're through a series of really unexpected and sort of amazing events, we are buying it. So we can do it all. Like we can really make it special. And I I really want to document that. So I'm going to do my best, but if you have ideas or if you've seen other content creators make content like before and after content of rooms, if you've seen people do that in a very effective way before and you can kind of suggest like the format or if you just have an idea of how you would like to see rooms change and a, and a house be furnished kind of from the ground up, let me know because I'll sprinkle in some of this content as the year goes on. I feel a little bit unhinged because I'm overwrought. I'm so excited. I think you can probably tell I'm so excited, but I'm also kind of overwhelmed. So I've just been like talking about, this is what happens, I think, when you expose the interior of your brain. When you make a video and you're like, I'm just going to tell you what's going on inside my head. Like, this is how it ends up. So uh, I'm going to go now. I hope this ended up being an interesting video. Thank you for watching it. And, you know, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.
I think we got it. <laughs> <laughs>